I always hear it does not pay to be an early adopter of technology, and that just might be the issue with the Raspberry Pi 4. I was super hyped to get this when I saw the announcement. We talked about it. Everybody was excited. I grabbed one. I have the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte version right here, and I'm super happy to have it, but a little disappointed now knowing what I know and have seen with these articles that are floating around over the past couple of days seems like the Raspberry Pi Foundation really flubbed this one up. Does it affect everyone? Possibly not, but it could. There still is a defect with this board with the way they designed it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick video, just trying to give you guys the information so you know what you're getting yourselves into. So the first run of the Raspberry Pi 4 has a USB-C charging issue. As you know, they did change the Raspberry Pi 4 to USB-C, which is cool, which it's cool, but it also kind of sucked because I was like, damn it, I can't use my previous power supply. I'm always, you know, I've said this for a while. People would ask me, what power supply do you recommend for the Pi 3B or 3B plus? And I'm just like, get the official power supply. That's what I use and I've never had an issue. I've used other power supplies that were marketed as a Raspberry Pi power supply. Now I get lightning bolt, you know, little lightning bolt icon under voltage, all that kind of stuff. Ran into issues, definitely sucked. So I always recommend, if you can, get the official one. And the good thing this time is uh, I only paid like eight bucks for this. So th that, that was fine. I, I didn't pay upwards of over $20 like the previous one for the Pi 3 was going for. Um, so if you can get it, get it. You will be fine with your board, but it still has this defect. Uh, so some some USB-C cables are just not delivering power to the you know the Pi 4, and there's a reason for that. So they state that smart chargers with an e-marked cable, once that have this, a special chip inside that automatically adjusts current, will incorrectly recognize the Raspberry Pi 4 as an audio accessory. So therefore, it just does not deliver power, and your system will not boot up. Some people may have ran into that issue and thought they had a defective board. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to quickly do this video is to let you know, I mean, do you have a defective board? Well, I mean, they designed it incorrectly. So I guess yes, but it still can work, but it has to have that proper power supply. So they also state with this that this is not something that will be fixed with a firmware update. It's, it's, a, it's an issue with the way the board was designed. Now, they have put like an update for the system cooling that makes the system run a little cooler as that is an issue as well with this Pi 4 is that this freaking thing runs hot. So they have tried to address that and that can be taken care of with a, you know, or at least remedied a little bit with a firmware update. Whereas this issue is just the design of the board. There's nothing that can be done other than releasing a revised board, which is what it sounds like they will be doing. So what's the issue? They're stating a proper USB-C port is supposed to separate 5.1K ohm resistors for each of the two CC pins. Raspberry Pi's non-compliant design, this thing's non-compliant, non-compliant with USB-C. Look at that clear Pi with my green screen action there. Um, <laughs> non-compliant design has them sharing a single resistor, which causes problems with some USB-C chargers and cables. So it could be one or the other. You could, your cable might not work with it. Your charging brick might not work with it. A lot of people, I've done this in the past, just mixed match cables and I would run into issues. I'd get a cable, get an adapter. Everything would state that it was, you know, the proper amps and, and whatnot for what I was doing, but then I would still have issues. That's why I'm, I'm just always like, man, get a quality power supply for your device. You won't regret it. If you really dig the Raspberry Pi, and you want to dig into this thing, just, just get the, the official power supply. <laughs> I mean, I'm not 100% where these are available at. I, I know, I'll, I'll put a link to whatever the company was, I can't think of their name right now, uh, that I ordered from, but I also ordered a few other things, so I, you know, kind of made sense with the shipping. Uh, but yeah, I'll put a link to where I bought mine, uh, because I kind, of, I kind of bought things at a few different places, got the board from one place, the case from another, the power supply, just crazy, man. Probably spent way too much doing that. But like I said, I did order a few other things from a couple of these companies. So kind of worked out. It wasn't a big deal.
But there you go. I just wanted to share this information with you guys. I know a lot of people have been hitting me up. Hey, man, where's your Raspberry Pi 4 content? This channel started with Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 content. We were doing a lot of stuff with that. And yeah, we've kind of shied away from that quite a bit. We still touch on Retro Pi and Recall Box and, you know, Blast 16. We've been talking about emulation and different projects with the Raspberry Pi you know, over the months, not all the time. And yeah, I'm super excited to, to dig into some content with this thing. It's really bringing back that feel that I had with the, the, you know, the previous revisions of the Pi. Like, man, what can we do with this thing? What can we do? We don't have the software yet for Retro Pi. There are other ways to implement gaming on this device at this moment, but it's just not stuff I'm really that interested in. I wanna see a slick front end, that works the way I want, you know, or I'm accustomed to, and I know you guys want to see, and I know RetroPie is still a ways off, but hopefully we'll get some other front ends that work with this and we can implement a lot of cool stuff and see how things work. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited for that stuff. So definitely we will be doing some more content with the Pi 4. But just today, I just got to let you guys know this issue. If you haven't gotten one yet, you may want to wait until they revise that board. If you want to grab one because of re retro pie and emulation, having those solid builds, having those solid front ends and user interfaces is still a ways off. So if you haven't gotten one yet, I wouldn't necessarily stress. They will be coming, you know, be becoming more widely available on places like Amazon. I know a lot of people wait for these to go on sale on Amazon. But then the thing is, too, is that these companies like Canakit and Villaross and all these other companies they put bundles together with a bunch of stuff that you don't want and they're upcharging everything uh you know the four gigabyte version of the pi 4 is 55 dollars guaranteed you'll start seeing the single boards from these resellers the legit resellers and they'll be charging like 75 for them you know and, and they'll probably throw in a cheap power supply or something like that but over time they'll become more available but you can order them on places like Canakit and stuff like that. So if you're looking for them, go ahead, but you may want to wait because of this issue. I don't think there's anything else wrong with this. I don't know that this could cause any other unforeseen issues. It doesn't seem like it, but it does make me worry. You know, like I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of times people state like man it, you just don't be an early adopter on technology you see it happen all the time uh people who bought like the nintendo switch and getting you know issues with the screen warping luckily nothing happened with mine but at the same time i got another nintendo switch a few months after for my kids and the analog sticks on the joy cons drift that's ridiculous so it's it's like when you buy these things early you can expect to, there to be issues that get ironed out over time, but it's always that thing of like, man, I want to get this now. I want to have it now. And I, I, I don't blame people for that. You know, I'm definitely get excited for things, you know, like the Raspberry Pi, the Nintendo Switch and, and, and all that, all that good stuff because just fun. But then at the same time, it could suck being that early adopter and having these unforeseen issues happen. How the heck did the Pi Foundation let this slip through? I believe they, they state something here like, you know, they, the, yeah, here we go. It's surprising this didn't show up in our quite extensive field testing program. Man, they should have sent one to me. I mean, I probably wouldn't have figured this out because I don't think I have any, you know, these e-marked cables or anything like that. At least I don't think I do. But yeah, man, like. I would imagine they would have had engineers that would have looked at this stuff if they state that the, the problem was it's supposed to have separate, you know, 5.1K ohms resistors for each of the pins, and they only did a single resistor. Like, wouldn't their engineers realize that? Or was this just something they never dealt with before? It just seems like a very strange oversight for such, a, you know, a good company who has done a lot of solid work. I'm not trying to beat them up. I'm just trying to you know, communicate out to you guys so you're aware of what the heck is going on um, and make an educated decision. You know, this is an issue, might be an issue that you could forgive. For me, like I said, it doesn't really affect me because I'm using their damn power supply. But who knows if there's other issues that'll be discovered in the coming days and weeks. Who knows? I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not sure if this issue can cause other problems, but 
there we go. So, hey, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Got a lot of content coming up. Uh, some little story time stuff, some product reviews, some highlights of things. Just trying to spread it out, do different things, see what you guys think and feel. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. The best way you guys can support me is commenting, liking, sharing, getting some people that you know who might dig my content, share it with them, help a brother out. That's all I ask. Really do appreciate it, guys. You mean the world to me. Hells yes. So I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-byes. And boom. Bye.